twice a year we are rewarded with a brand new Ubuntu release and usually on the day of release I will do a video looking at the new features and talking about everything that's in there but this time I decided to do something a little bit different. This time I decided to actually use Ubuntu for almost two weeks. I used it a little bit before it was released in beta form and then I upgraded to the stable version that was released that day and then I've been using it ever since. Now I've been trying to install it on the same hardware that I usually do these distro reviews on which is my main machine. This time I was not successful in that. That has nothing to do with Ubuntu. I'm just having some hard drives problems and I keep forgetting about it. It's like I forget that, that hard drive is bad and then I spend an hour trying to fix it and it's dead. I need to just replace it but that's beside the point. So I installed Ubuntu 22.10 on my laptop. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. So the first thing that I should say is that the B-roll that you're about to see was recorded on a laptop that does not have a 1080p screen. So there's likely to be a border around it when I edit it. So just I apologize for that. I'm working on rectifying that situation, but that'll be for future reviews. So just I apologize for that. So let's go ahead and jump in. First, I'm going to talk about new features, and then I will talk about the experience I had with it over the week or so a little bit over a week that I used it. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first new feature that I was actually really excited to see is a quick settings panel. Now this is something that drops down in the place of the previous drop down menu up in the upper right hand corner. And what makes it awesome is that it's really interactable. There's a lot of stuff here that you can control right from this panel. It means that there's no more having to go spelunking into the settings panel and actually in order to do things like change the power settings, change the Bluetooth settings, change the network settings, things like that. A lot of that stuff can be done right here. Same thing with the dark mode. Dark mode can be toggled right here with a click of a button and it is amazing, especially when it's combined with GNOME's options of changing the wallpaper based on what mode you're in. So you'll, you can have a light and a dark wallpaper. That's really cool. So the quick settings panel is a fantastic piece of work and I really liked it. I've also seen some extensions come out in the last few days since Ubuntu 22.10 was released and since GNOME 43 was released that allow you to add things to the quick settings panel. Things like the now playing and music controls will show up there too with a certain extension and I've seen a couple other extensions too that expand the capabilities of the quick settings panel so that makes me even more excited for this particular new feature. So speaking of settings, the settings panel in Ubuntu 22.10 has been upgraded to the GTK4 libadueta version of the GNOME Control Center. This is something that they missed out on in the last version of Ubuntu. And basically what you're getting here is a more cohesive experience with the rest of the applications in GNOME and Ubuntu. So you're going to get a responsive design, which means that you can shrink it down and it will look good on phones if you're going to use it on a smaller screen. And you're going to have the ability to use tools like gradients to theme it and stuff like that. So there's not a lot there in terms of actual user features that are, you know, things that people will care about, but it does fit in better now with the rest of the design of the operating system. When you go diving into the settings panel, there are a few new things. So there's a new Ubuntu desktop settings panel, basically where it will allow you to control and tweak certain parts of the Ubuntu desktop, things like the desktop icons, how the dock behaves and stuff like that. The, all that stuff used to be in the appearance settings. Now it's been split off into the Ubuntu desktop settings. There's also some more settings and options for managing applications. So you can actually get access to the store page of the application that you're searching for and get more information on the applications that you have installed, which is really nice. The Ubuntu dock has also gained some new functionality. So if you have multiple instances of an application open, you can click on that icon in the dock and it will show you an exploded view of all of the open versions of that application so that you can choose between them. That is something that is really nice. Uh, I'm not sure what happens now if you want to minimize something. So if you're used to using the dock to minimize things, that functionality seems to have gone away. I'm not actually sure. I didn't actually try that out. So it may have just moved to a different click event or something like that. But I seem to remember in GNOME that you'd click on the dock and it would minimize it. But maybe I'm misremembering. 
So one of the big omissions in the last version of Ubuntu was the newest version of Nautilus. Now, Nautilus is almost notoriously behind in Ubuntu simply because it's a big application. It controls a lot of stuff inside of GNOME, and that means that they're very cautious with bringing in brand new features. But this time, they have managed to get the GNOME 43 version of Nautilus into Ubuntu, and it is really good. It looks fantastic, so that's good. But it also has a responsive mode so that you can actually, you know, shrink it down and make it different sizes and it'll look really nice. It'll also allow you to easily format USB drives and SD cards. You won't see this in a B-roll here because I didn't actually have one connected to the computer. But you can right-click on the USB drive in the sidebar and then click Format, similar to what you could do in a lot of other file managers so that's a nice addition also the list view is much improved you'll see a little bit of this in the b-roll but i don't have a lot of files on this system so it, you probably won't get a good sense of what it's actually improved but basically what they've done is they've increased the padding around some items in the list view and they've made rubber banding possible i don't know what that actually means but there's also a new column there that has the favorite icon if the items in the list have been favorited which is nice you can also click that to add a favorite then there are a few features that i didn't get any b-roll of because they're kind of things that i can't display on the screen easily so pipe wire is now default so if you are not a fan of pipe wire uh tough luck there i guess you supposedly could probably pull that out and put pulse audio back in but for me, Pipewriter has been working really well on my main system on Fedora, and it worked really well in Ubuntu. I didn't have any of the traditional Pipewire problems that I normally have. So, Pipewire seems to be at least somewhat ready now, at least for just everyday use. Now, I didn't do anything special on that laptop. I didn't record any videos with a, you know external microphone or a DAC or any of that stuff. I just used the built-in speakers and whatever. And it worked fine. So Pipewire is now default. They've also added WebP image support. So when you inevitably download something from Google search that is not a traditional image format like PNG or JPEG, and you end up with WebP, Nautilus will now show you a preview of WebP support. So that is good. Why it wasn't there to begin with? I mean, WebP has been around for quite some time. I don't know why they're just building that in, but it does now support it. And obviously you get all of the traditional underlying Linux stuff that is improved. So you get a brand new version of the kernel. You get brand new versions of a lot of applications. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but you'll also get a brand new version of Mutter, which is the compositor that lies underneath GNOME. So Mutter 43 gains multi-monitor direct scan out support. It has better support for both Wayland and Xorg sessions. So uh, both of those should be more stable. GNOME 43 also has better notifications in some places. I didn't really notice any difference, to be honest with you. I'm just saying what the show, what, what the change log says. So notifications are still basically what they've always been to me. And the Yaru icon theme has picked up some new icons as well. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the applications. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the applications or the built-in op applications simply because... If you've ever used GNOME or Ubuntu before, you know what these things are. Basically, they're all updated applications. And in traditional Ubuntu fashion, none of them are the same version. So you're going to see some GNOME 42 applications. You're going to see some GNOME 43 applications. I will say that it's not as bad as some of the releases in the past where they were like three or four versions of GNOME applications behind. I only saw for GNOME 42 and GNOME 43 applications here, so that's actually much better. And as far as I'm aware, all of them, the major applications that they ship are now libadawaitas. So if you're using something like Gradients, you can use that and know that it'll affect all of your applications, which is nice. You're also going to get brand new versions of Firefox, so you'll get Firefox 105, and you'll get Thunderbird 102. LibreOffice is version 7.4 so in terms of pre-installed applications it's basically what you've always gotten with ubuntu i didn't notice anything special here and they all look really nice and i will have to say this with the new ability to choose accent colors which we got in a previous ubuntu release and the dark theme you can make ubuntu look really really nice especially now that you're not 
forced to use the dock along the side and you can actually make that into a floating panel along the bottom without actually having to install an extra extension to do so. That's really nice as well. It makes it look really, really good. So those are the new applications. I didn't want to, like I said, spend too much time on it because I wanted to move into my actual usage of Ubuntu over the last week and a half or so, or however long it's been. So I am not an Ubuntu guy. I'm a Fedora guy now. And I'm also not a GNOME guy. I'm just never have been. If you've watched the channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I've had many, 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 many words <laughs> uh, about gnome and its goodness i suppose you know i've just not been a gnome guy ever so i was therefore quite surprised when i used ubuntu 22.10 to have such a good experience i managed to change enough of the key bindings where i could actually switch between workspaces in the way i'm used to quit applications the way i'm used to open the terminal the way i'm used to i basically made it into a tiling window manager in terms of key bindings which is actually a good idea seeing as how it makes it usable for me. So that was probably the reason why I had such a good experience with it. In terms of actual use, it was really good. Now, there are a few things that I had problems with, and I did not get any of this on camera, unfortunately, in terms of the problems. So the biggest one is that I had several times where certain applications would just completely crash. And I don't know why... It would just say, Ubuntu has experienced an issue, would you like to send a bug report? And of course I press yes, but I noticed that when I was trying to use the GNOME screen recorder to do a screencast, because I was going to actually use the screen recorder to record the B-roll for this video, it didn't work because it just kept crashing. Uh, there was a couple other times where certain applications would just, for whatever reason, crash. I also noticed that the software center, the or the Snap Store would take forever to load, even after it had already been loaded one time. So I'm used to the initial load time of a Snap. It's just something you're going to have to get used to. But the problem is, is that that was after I'd already loaded it one time, and it took almost a minute for it to load. Now, I was recording at the time, so I'm not sure if that had anything to play in with it, but I did notice that. Now, in terms of the whole Snap thing, I want to take a minute to talk about that because it's tradition and I have to. I will say... One good thing about it, they have made the Firefox Snap load faster than it was the last time I used Ubuntu. So, even on the t crappy ThinkPad that I tested this on, which is like a Core i3 from nine years ago, I mean, it was a long time ago, the Firefox Snap loaded fairly fast. Now, it was still slower than if it was a native package. It was, but it wasn't like 45 seconds slow. So, it loaded much faster than it used to. So that was a good thing. I also noticed that pretty much across the board that snaps have loaded faster this time than ever before. So uh, w finally, they finally decided that they're going to put some effort into making snaps load a little bit faster. So good on them. Thank you, Canonical. The bad news is that that stupid snap application folder is still in your home directory and that ruins any goodwill I had towards them making snaps faster. It makes snaps completely unusable for me because I do not want you to ever mess with my home directory, at least in full view of me. Like, if you got to do it, make it a hidden file. I don't like it. I don't want you to do that, but at least hide it away. It's like shoving something in the closet so I just don't have to see it. You know, I know it's still there, but at least it would be out of sight, out of mind. But no, that damn snap directory is still there. And it just, why can't we fix this? There is a bug report on for SnapD to get rid of that. And it's been there since Snap was created. It still has not been fixed. Uh, I, I'm at the point now where I'm going to learn how to code just so I can, you know, fix that problem. Because it's, it drives me nuts. It makes Snaps completely unusable for me. And I know it's a stupid thing. Like, I know it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It really doesn't impact the performance of snaps and whatever, you know, whatsoever. But I can't stand it. It drives me bonkers. Like, it just drives me nuts. So, yeah, that was not a good experience. Honestly, just use flat packs. I mean, maybe I'm just biased because I like flat, flat packs so much better, but it just flat packs are better. They should use flat packs. Anyways, that's not, that's really neither here nor there. So, my experience with this version of Ubuntu specifically was really good, but really what I took away from it was 
that GNOME continues to get better and the Ubuntu version of GNOME is even more ahead of vanilla GNOME. So I've used vanilla GNOME fairly recently and while they have done a much better job of doing certain things that make it more usable so they've added dark, a dark mode you know and they've made the UI cleaner and stuff like that. Ubuntu has taken what GNOME offers and adds certain pieces to it like accent colors and the ability to move the dock around and have dash to dock already installed and they've added extensions for like desktop icons and things that go the icons that go in the task tray or whatever you know they've added these extensions that you kind of need in order to make your desktop functional so basically what has happened is that they've taken gnome and solved a lot of the problems that gnome has always had specifically when it comes to things like customization that ability to choose an accent color is just chef's kiss it's so good and it almost completely negates the reason for you to ever want to theme your your desktop just choose an accent color and it just makes everything look really good especially in dark mode where that like a purple and the red kind of just really pop i'd have no reason to install a theme at all like i used this for a week and a half never installed gnome tweaks and that is just unheard of when it comes to me and gnome like that's always the first thing that i do this time i didn't install it at all so yeah, I had a pretty good experience, and I'm kind of shocked. Now, before the people who dislike GNOME as much as I always have get out the torches and pitch, pitchforks, you know, I'm not still, I'm still not a GNOME guy. Like, the, the workflow is just not for me. I'm a tiling window manager guy, so I, I don't really think that even as good as GNOME on Ubuntu has gotten, it would ever sway me away from my tiling window managers. Now, there is one thing that I find a little annoying, and I just kind of thought about this, is that when you tile applications side by side in Ubuntu, it does a really good job of doing so. So you can put two windows side by side, and if you move them back and forth, it'll actually move both of them. So if you drag in the middle, it'll drag both of them, so it'll resize both. That's really good. The problem is that, is that they no longer have the quarter tiling like they used to. Maybe that hasn't been there for a while, but I just and I just noticed it. But if you drag up into the corners of the desktop, you can no longer tile in a quarter of the screen. Like you can on basically every other desktop environment. And that means that if you want to tile things, you either have to install an extension or you have to do it kind of manually. And that's that's not gr a great experience. You'll probably see that in some of the B-roll if I get that part in here, but it was just not, that's not a great thing. And it's weird because when I first saw that ability to basically drag in one place and have both, so both windows resized, I was like, hey, that's really good, right? And then I tried to tile in a, in a, in a corner with a, for the quarter tiling and it just, it doesn't work. So that kind of ruined it for me a little bit. So that was one extra thing that I kind of noticed. So overall, if you are an Ubuntu user and you are one of those people who don't use the LTS, so you're moving from the interim release to interim release, this is a good upgrade for you. If you are not an Ubuntu user, but you're looking to distro hop, this is also something good for you to try because I actually really enjoyed it. Outside of those few bugs and the randomness that is the snap directory in my home directory, just, you know, whatever, it was a really good experience, and I'm happy that I gave it as much time as I did. So, yeah, that is Ubuntu 22.10. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the challenges would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.